In the last session, we created a test architect project. Now we'll begin to populate our project. The test architect test module is where your test cases live. So we'll start by creating our first test module. In the course of this session, we'll also discuss the recommended organization of a test module. The test module template with which each new test module is furnished assists you in that organization. During this session, we'll be working with the repository My Repository and the project My Car Rental created in the previous session. If you haven't already created these items and you plan to work through the steps here, please feel free to work within the sample repository already provided, but it is suggested that you do at least create a new project. Over the next few sessions, we'll be working with a sample car rental application included with Test Architect. If you'd like to check it out, it can be accessed from within the Test Architect client environment by selecting Help, Sample Applications, Car Rental. Our initial work will test the functionality of the login window, the first thing the application presents us upon launch. Our test will involve the following steps. Startup Car Rental. In the login window, enter a username of Alex. We already know Alex has a valid user account in Car Rental. Enter Alex's password of TA. Now click the login button. A successful login should result in the welcome window being displayed, so we'll test for that window. And finally, we'll close the application. If you don't already have it open, go ahead and launch Test Architect now. Right-click the test node of your working project and select New Test Module. In the dialog box, specify a module name of login and add a brief description. Click Create and a new test module node appears under the test node with its file open in the editor. Note the template. The editor formats all new test modules this way. Though not essential, it's standard practice to divide your test module into these functional sections. The Objective section is where you define the scope of your test module in the form of one or more test objective lines. Note that the test editor has started us off with an initial test objective line which we'll complete when we start writing our test. The Initial section is where you would want to place any action lines that you need to set up your test or application. For instance, Test Architect has a number of built-in settings that govern the behavior of tests and you could set these here. You might want to have the test start up the target application and perhaps navigate to the window where testing is to start. And at times you may want to launch other programs for your application to interact with or configure the host system to test your application's behavior under certain conditions. Following the initial section is a test case. Unlike the other sections, a test module can and generally does hold multiple test cases. Each test case should perform testing that is within the defined scope of the test module. And if you have objectives defined for your test module, a test case should start off by referencing every objective that it helps to fulfill to help ensure traceability. At the end of the module, the final section is where you might let your test clean up after itself. Test modules should be independent of each other, yet they are often run in series in a single test run. So it's a good idea to end each test module either by shutting down the target application or bringing it back to a known, consistent state along with its environment. Well, we've just created a test module and learned something about applying a logical structure to our test modules. In the next session, before we write in the action lines for the test, we'll capture and map some of the UI elements of the application. Among other things, this will allow our action lines to reference those elements by logical names, ones of our own choosing. 